hello again. It's been about a year and a half since we last talked, and this is the first time we're talking in person. So yes, <laughs> pretty loaded question, but how have you been since we last talked? Uh, you know what? I've been I've been pretty good. I mean, um, we got a new record finished uh, during this uh, pandemic. I finished my private pilot license. I bought an airplane. So uh, I've been doing lots of flying and uh, I got my first show coming up here this Saturday, which is my first and only show in Canada uh, this year um, at uh, it's called Back the Burls, but uh, it's usually called Boots and Hearts Music Festival. So I'm uh, really excited to get back out and, and rock that place. Incredible. So have any of your tours or anything been officially rescheduled yet or is everything still pretty up in the air? Uh, things are, are still up in the air uh, with regards to the tours that I had last year, um, but I'll be going out this fall across the U.S. with uh, my good friend Lizzie Hale and Hailstorm, along with Theory of a Dead Man, and I'll be playing some, uh, some great uh, rock festivals or hard rock festivals like Rock Lahoma and Incarnation. I'll also be playing the New York State Fair at the end of the month, so um, you know, there's about 15, 16 shows there uh, between the end of August and mid-September, so Again, just just happy to be able to get back out and do what I do. Incredible. Yeah, you had lots of plans for last year and it looked like everything got canceled right before it got started. So that must have been quite mm -hmm. a bummer. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it certainly was. So during the pandemic, you were online doing some acoustic solo streaming on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Uh, what was it like to get involved with people so directly and intimately on such a regular basis? You know what? It was it was a little different. Um, you know, it definitely took some some getting used to. Uh, the alcohol consumption was definitely a lot more than uh, it tends it tends to, to usually be. Uh, but you know, had as much fun as we possibly could, none, nonetheless. And it was great to 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 meet and make new fans throughout throughout that that whole pandemic. Um, you know, that's definitely a plus side. And and uh, you know, it's not as much as much as we missed touring and traveling. It was kind of nice just to come come upstairs into my studio here with with my, my drink of choice and just sit here for an hour and play what I want and how I want. Uh, and, and knowing that, that uh, the fans are loving it. And it wasn't only just fans in North America, here in Canada and the U S it was, uh, you know, all over the world. I think on average, there was probably between 15 and 20 different countries tuning in um, every, every live, whether that was on Wednesdays, which I think were the Instagram ones and then Facebook's on Friday. So um, it was very, um, you know, humbling to, to see and feel, um, I always say see and feel the love uh, from not only my homeland, but uh, just around the world in general. So it was, uh, it was a unique experience and, and one I'll never forget. Uh, mm -hmm. And again, just, just excited to, to get back out and do it, uh, do it for real this time. Uh, but it, it reminded me a lot of, uh, you know, when I first started out, you know, um, in my, in my early twenties, um, playing these smaller clubs and venues is very much like that where you're, you know, no more than five feet away from the first row and sitting on a, on a, on a bench, uh, just you and your guitar and a microphone and, and a song. So it kind of reminded me of going back to those days and now getting back to gear up for the big stages. It's always good to kind of remember that feeling from the beginning when everything's fresh and exciting and very uh, absolutely. Intimate. Yes, absolutely. So for sure, I've been listening to your album a ton since it was released, and I even Thank sent you. it back to my parents in Canada, who, of course, you know, I grew up listening to country because of them, and I wasn't sure if they'd like it. I thought it might be a little heavy for them, and, uh, <laughs> but they, they did. They, they thought it was really good. Uh, I think my mom said there was a bit too much uh, ooh in it for her, mm. but uh, <laughs> the... Uh, good guitar riffing and stuff certainly didn't put off my dad by any means and they called it a good album to put on when the kids are around which means people uh -huh. my age I guess. <laughs> fair enough yep but with that in mind uh have you found a lot of support from the older country generation or do you think you're maybe a little bit too heavy for some of them i mean i'm always a little uh, anxious as to what you know, um, yeah, the, the older, the older folks are going to think, but even some guys, you know, younger folks like myself that, yeah, you know, I have great appreciation for, for Waylon and Merle and, and Willie and, you know, um, you know, the real, real country music. Um, you know, I still love that stuff and I'm a huge fan of it, 
Uh, although this stuff, yes, it's a, a little more on, on the, the hard, harder, heavier side. Uh, but the goal is with this album was to stay away from the pop uh, pop side of country, which I think is just totally overkill these days. And um, it's, it's hard to find a distinct sound or someone that sounds like themselves, because I just find a lot of the artists now just sound the same. The production's the same. Uh, the melodies are the same, uh, which takes away from the artistry. So we just wanted to kind of make something different. That was the whole goal is, is um, you know, no one's done it this way. I don't think, uh, um, you know, having Kevin Churko, you know, producer for Five Finger Death Punch, Ozzy Osbourne, Disturbed, and of course, Shania Twain. Um, you know, uh, we wanted to really do our own, you know, country rock the way we heard it. And, um, you know, I'm both a metalhead and hard rock guy, but also a huge country guy. So um, I don't think there's anyone in rock or country doing it the way we did it and, and will continue to do and, and hopefully pave a whole new lane for country music. But that being said, I, I still pay tribute to, to my heroes like Merle Haggard with uh, a song like My Whiskey or Wine, where it's really stripped down steel guitar and fiddle. And, um, you know, I, I love singing that stuff and I love writing that stuff. There's a lot more of that stuff that I do write. It just doesn't make it to the records as quick. But um, there will be some of that stuff on, on the new record. Um, this new record is definitely... Uh, we still we still have the rock and roll attitude, but uh, it's veered more towards you know country. My my roots as again uh, the Alan Jacksons, Brad Paisleys, Merle Haggard. Um, so it's got a little more of a country feel to it, but there are a few uh, hard rock songs on this one. Incredible. Now, uh, obviously, your new EP is <clears throat> coming out. Uh, it has your solo version of Outlaws and Outsiders. Um, how, how does it feel to have like the no guests version of that song like well i mean obviously they contributed a played a huge you know huge role and a huge factor in that song and, and the success of that song which is still climbing today on a global scale which is just uh gets me grinning ear to ear to think that the song is still so loved and connected with so many people millions of people around the world um you know that and that's what really art and music is all about is being able to do that and I'm very happy to be able to do that. Um, and hopefully a lot more of those songs uh, will, will come and connect with, with you know, that, that kind of mass of people. Um, but um, yeah, sorry, I'm, now, I'm, now I'm talking too much. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not sure if I remember. But um, <laughs> yeah, like, how do, how do you like the uh, non-guest version of the song? Oh, oh right, yeah. Song? Well, I mean, I wrote that. We wrote that uh, myself. I was on a, I was an Outsiders tour across Canada with my good buddy Aaron Burchett. Um, and uh, I thought, man, that would be a great hook, Outlaws and Outsiders. And that's really how I was feeling, and quite frankly, still kind of do right now at Canadian Country Radio. Um, so <clears throat> that being said, I kind of started writing and working on this song, Outlaws and Outsiders, but brought the idea to, to Kevin and Kane. And, and, you know, I'm happy to have them helped me write this this great song they definitely added the edge to it a little more edge to it and um so to have that version i mean you know we recorded that in 2015 uh originally so uh it's been hidden in a vault for quite some time so just to have it out it's been great but uh, to not have this the guests on there i mean i, I just kind of get used to it singing it uh you know singing it by myself every night so um that being said it's just kind of uh you know, it's, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's still a great song in my opinion. And, and I, and I just, I enjoy singing it. Uh, you know, I've only got the opportunity to sing it a handful of times before COVID hit, uh, to an actual, you know, live audience, but I, I do remember the feeling and I know it was, it was really great to see the crowd light up once that song, that song struck. So, um, it, it it'll be fun. And, and, uh, you know, I, I love both versions equally. Nice. Well, I, I know for sure. I'm not sure if it was the first song I heard from you, but definitely Travis Tritt gave a, a lot of country music cred. And then Ivan Moody gave <clears> a lot of like heavy metal cred. So I think both, both like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like band groups, genre fans. Or genres. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're su very pleasantly surprised, let's say, to find both country accessible to metalheads and then like kind of metal accessible to country people as well so yeah I was pretty out. blown away I was pretty blown away by the reaction of you know even the country fans saying a lot of these comments were this is what country music needs which is exactly my thought so <laughs> glad we connected there um but there's also a lot of you know metalheads are you know I hate country or don't listen to country but I love this shit or like I love this sound <laughs> Well, that, that's great because, you know, again, like I am a hard rock metal guy at heart too. So I love, you know, guys like, like again, Merle and, 
and that classic country to me is there's nothing else like it but i'm also I, you know I, I grew up on you know pantera lamb of god arch enemy like you know some really heavy shit so and of course start that started with with bands like rush and deep purple and ozzy and black sabbath and stuff so and that's that's really what i want to do with my music is 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 uh kind of try to mash all that together because it's really no pun intended who i am uh but you know that that mix of of, of real country music and hard rock and again even even a little metal in there so that's that's kind of the sound uh, that we, we really tried to create with this record and and these singles Absolutely. I, I love it. I think I fully agree with the fans who say that country's been missing this for a while. I, I wasn't <clears throat> ever sure if it was just modernization, like that ranch life and living in the country isn't such a thing anymore. I don't know about in the US, but at least in Canada, it's, you know, there's farms and everything, but that culture isn't so strong anymore. And I guess, it, yeah, maybe pop kind of came in because of that i'm not sure but. i'm not sure what happened but uh, hopefully we can fix that quick <laughs> <laughs> well back to outlaws and outsiders then you uh had uh, this or the movie was used in uh the soundtrack uh for this movie snow babies as i understand is that right yep yeah uh, we used outlaws and outsiders for for the movie snow babies yeah so uh, as I understand, uh, Better Noise Music is involved in a lot of kind of multimedia stuff, not just music, but uh, movies and maybe some books and things like that as well. So uh, did I understand correctly that were you in the movie like performing or was it just the song used in the movie? Uh, the song was used in the movie, but uh, I, my, uh, my song Blame It on the Double featuring Tyler Conley of Theory of a Dead Man and Jason Hook of Five Finger Death Punch. Um, that I, I actually play the role, a role uh, in that movie, in this movie com, uh, that's going to be coming out later this year, I hope, called The Retaliators. And that's, uh, that's a pretty cool, badass, uh, you know, horror, horror film. Um, and it's funny because I, I, I'm not a huge fan of horror films. I'm, you know, <laughs> uh, for, for an outlaw and outsider, I'm, I'm pretty scared of them. So uh, I, I, t I tend not to watch them, but I do love Halloween. It's kind of a weird, weird thing. But um, um, and not the movie. I mean, Halloween, the, the you know, <laughs> October 31st, because uh, the Halloween movies is what petrified me from from horror movies in general. Um, but uh, yeah, so I actually play the role of Jimmy, the bartender, uh, the five finger death punch boys. Uh, they're they're their little uh, clubhouse uh, they're bikers in the movie and um their clubhouse i'm i'm their bartender their server jimmy and so i play a very small role but it was it was fun nonetheless and, and it also features the retaliators also features the song blame it on the double nice uh was being in movies something you had initially been interested in or was that just an uh, opportunity always. <laughs> uh, i've i've been wanting to be in movies uh you know, for, for quite some time now, I've always had a, like, I, I really enjoy shooting uh, music videos and uh, the small bits I've, an experience that I've had in, in actual movies or, or TV shows, um, you know, has always been fun for me. And, and, and I do think, uh, I think there's room for me on the screen somewhere, some movie, some whatever, <laughs> and hopefully I get a lot more opportunities uh, to, to play a role and maybe some more serious roles uh, down the road for some, for some, you know, bigger movies. Incredible. Well, you've at least got the singing voice for it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, maybe I could play the role of some guy at a bar somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta start somewhere. That's right. So, after Outlaws and Outsiders, uh, how did you guys compile the rest of this Nashville Nights EP? How did you pick the songs and the versions and whatnot? Uh, I think just just putting the songs together that kind of, you know, we had the uh, Nashville Mornings EP, which is more of the... Uh, hung over and hard up, you know, uh, had too many Nashville nights, um, you know, so we wanted, you know, and it was more veered towards country, if you will. Um, this Nashville nights is, um, you know, a little, little, little edgier. It's kind of, it's geared toward, you know, it's approaching the end of the summer, although I hate saying that, but it's geared towards, um, you know, getting amped up to go out and, 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 you know, now the world's kind of coming back to normal in a sense. Well, you know, now now people can get excited and, and turn up the Nashville Night CP and get ready to go out and go bar hopping again or listen to live music. Incredible. So one of my questions for you was, 
if you're a John Mellencamp fan because of the Jack and Diane reference in Good to Be Us. I wasn't fully sure if that was the reference, but it was the first thing that came up when I Googled Jack and Diane. So Yeah, well, I mean, of course John Mellencamp is is a, is a, definitely a, a legend in his own right and I grew up on his music, but that's actually Good to Be Us is uh, the only song on the record I didn't write. Um, but 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 it, it spoke to me and um it was it was pitched at the time by by ole and now they're um um anthem entertainment um uh, there's some writers there jeremy stover and a few other guys that uh you know sent me that song and, and it really you know kevin thought he could do some really cool stuff with it and you know it is it is a feel-good kind of party uh, up song so uh you know it, there was room for that on the record and um you know i that's one of my that's you know, I love that song too very much. So uh, I'm, I'm excited to play that one live. Incredible. Well, I noticed that, you know, country is pretty legendary for being kind of depressing, but most of your music is <laughs> actually pretty positive and upbeat. Is that <laughs> intentional or are you just a positive and upbeat person? Uh, a little bit of both. I mean, I, I'm sure I have a lot of uh, down days too, just like anybody. But um, I think I, with that record and that time uh, in my life where I was at, um, I think I was, I was, I was too down to bring anybody else down. So I took my, my, my hard feelings and turned them up, turn it up to, you know, something a little more upbeat rather, uh, like for a song like devil's grin. Um, and, and, uh, you know, even blame it on the devil. Um, so I, it's a little bit different than, than, you know, my whiskey or wine, but then there's also songs that keep doing what I do where it's, um, <clears throat> you know, it's me being, a little bit bitter me but instead of being down about it it's it's you know we're gonna keep doing doing my thing i mean and 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 who i am is another one that uh, yeah. that was just a song i was just kind of going over uh you know the time of this time of my life was around that time and i just picked up this guitar after a full day at the studio with kevin and you know i wrote that one in about 20 minutes and put it on my phone sent it to kevin I'm like what do you think about this one we're gonna cut that tomorrow <laughs> so all right you know so it just kind of all worked out but that's one of those songs where you know obviously i i reference uh i reference guys like like merle and, and johnny in there and um um you know and if you know their music enough you, you you'll hear it but <laughs> that that one's kind of uh you know it's i like to say like a modern day whaling if you will it's it, it kind of starts off a little low but it, you know it kind of picks you back up to kind of you know keep fighting keep throwing punches incredible i absolutely love it uh, I don't well, think you. it's really possible for there to be too many kind of empowerment anthems in the world. There's always people in bad places who always need to pick me up. So yeah, absolutely. Keep it coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're coming. So you kind of just touched on this, but uh, in the past, country artists have always kind of talked about each other and their music. And like you said, you've you've been doing that too. Like you mentioned Waylon Jennings and Blame It on the Double. So do you think that's actually kind of like an important part of country music or is it just something you like to sneak in as kind of a tribute to the elders, so to speak? <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's just trying to, you know, uh, you know, pay tribute to them and, 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 you know, again, the music I listen to, uh, and again, a song like Blame on the Double is uh, something we wrote, you know, six years ago now in 2015. So I was doing it before that, you know, what you're hearing on radio, which I think is just kind of pointless name dropping in some circumstances. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, just, it, I just, you know, it's, you know, just kind of, it was fitting and uh, again like i'm a whalen whalen fan and um you know it kind of it kind of just all all made sense and was put together um but yeah it was uh, again it was you know i was i was doing that before it was uh you know a thing it's almost <laughs> like a reference to you know you hear those comments about uh you know you know how could be an outlaw with a man bun or, or whatever you know <laughs> wear my hair up well I'm a, I'm a, I'm an athlete as well. So, um, you know, and I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure a guy like Jason Momoa and, and Triple H in wrestling put their hair up too. So there's nothing wrong with it, but, uh, that's because, you know, obviously there's, there was a trend that started and then it becomes overkill, but I just like to put out there that I was, I was before the trend, both in the name dropping and the, uh, man bun, which I like to call a mun. <laughs> yeah. People really, get wound up over man buns <laughs> i'm not too sure why 
Maybe in North America, long hair is still not that common, but I think every other guy I know in Finland has a man bun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, it is, it is, uh, I guess it is, I see that a little more, yeah, in Europe and stuff like that. Um, but I guess it's, uh, I'm not sure, I guess it's frowned upon in some places down here, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Got to keep pushing the limits. Hey, that's right. So, of course, you've also got the party songs, but I've noticed the reference to toke, smoke, and, of course, cannabis has been recently legalized in Canada. I guess it's not that recent now, but a few years ago anyways. So do you have any thoughts on that? Do you think other countries should do it? I mean, um, I don't really see a harm in it. Um, you know, as long as you're, you know, you're doing it for... Uh, you know, the right reasons and, and you're not getting too crazy. I mean, um, I mean, alcohol is legal, right? So I don't, I don't see why, um, you know, something, I mean, obviously a natural, natural herb, uh, um, you know, but uh, th there is some crazy stuff out there that maybe, maybe, maybe shouldn't be legalized uh, the way people react to it. But uh, nonetheless, I mean, definitely if it's medicinal and, and, you know, you, uh you know if you have trouble sleeping i know that i know it helps for that or if uh, you have trouble eating it definitely helps for that so you know if it helps you it uh, makes you better sleep better feel better uh be better uh you know i i don't i don't see a problem with it fair enough i think that's a lot <laughs> of the uh <laughs> the reasoning these days and i mean at the end of the day in, in a lot of circumstances it's a lot better than the pills they give you that are legal so mm, truly i've had mm -hmm. some uh relatives addicted to oxycontin who had to go back on it uh recreationally uh originally and then had to go back on it because of a car accident and it really messed them up so yeah yeah i try to try to do things au naturel it's the <laughs> best best to do but sometimes uh, you, i guess you need a little bit of you <laughs> need a little uh, doctor's note to help you through those tough times but hopefully you pull through uh, speaking of kind of getting crazy too, um, just, you know, I grew up in Canada. I know what people like. I'm sure my brothers or at least their friends have spent the odd night in jail in a drunk <laughs> tank or something. I was yeah. curious, have you ever been in the drunk tank or do you know anyone who has? Oh yeah. I spent some time there. Uh, yeah. The, back in the younger days, bar fights, sticking up for people and, just being young, wild, and crazy, and I think um, I'm lucky number eight, I believe, is my my count, believe it or not. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I never stayed in, 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 you know, a state prison like 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 Merle did, um, but uh, you know, definitely, definitely, definitely spent more time than than I think anyone I know. <laughs> uh, in that, that case, whether it was. You know, because if you add them together, that's that's eight nights. That's a whole week in jail. That's that's long enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, for sure. And you never know. There's a lot of stories that get told in country. You're never sure if they're from the artists themselves or from maybe their friends or family. Or... Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, there's uh, that's one thing I, I do like to write about is obviously my life and, and you know, what, what I feel and, and, and think. But also um, some of the things I've seen, you know, like heartbreak through through close friends or family and you know it's all it all impacts us uh you know personally one way or another whether you know because breakups even I mean whether you're going through it or someone else is going through it they're, they're never easy right and even even if it's um I find even in some circumstances even if they're you know both parties feel the same way it still kind of sucks because if they've been together a long time you know you kind of you got to start dividing and and kind of going your own way if you will and you know, so it's it's just change is what it is, right? So, yeah, I just like to sing, uh, write, write about, you know, if, whether it's uh, my breakup or somebody else is close to me. Well, and that's just it, right? Like, if you can so easily connect to other people's experiences and write about them, then it's pretty easy for people to connect to your music as well through that. Exactly. Exactly. Try to keep it real. <laughs> Incredible. So, of course, in Finland not a big country scene in fact i the first finnish songs 
that are kind of country I've ever heard just were released this year by a solo project from an artist, Nora Lohimo, who sings in a band called Battle Beast. She released okay. a solo album with um, <laughs> a couple like very country influenced uh, Dolly Parton-esque kind of songs, but so country really small, tight-knit fan base here. Not a lot of people who listen to it. Um, so, and and even then, like, um, young bands here tend to maybe have a couple thousand followers after their first couple of albums, and you've got just an insane following right now. <laughs> so, wondering if you have any tips for artists or uh, suggestions on how to get their music out a bit? Well, I mean, uh, first of all, I have, a, I have a great team at Better Noise and, and obviously on the production side of things. So uh, that definitely helps having a world-class producer like like uh, Kevin and Kane Cherko. Um, you know, so surrounding yourself with a great team, I think is, is, is number one, but um, obviously just, the one thing that that Kevin and I were so happy about is that um, you know with this with this label, um, you know, in many cases uh, you're told what to play and how to play it, um, and I, I I'm not really big into that. Uh, hence, keep doing what I do. And so, you know, with the success that, that Kevin's had and, and Kane and Better Noise has allowed us just to create the the art we want to create, tell the stories we want to tell. And again, I think that's really important as an artist, whether you're country rock or whatever you are. And, and I'm very thankful that I have that opportunity to do that um, with, with such great, again, such great players and great production. Um, so, you know, I've, I've, I'm, I'm happy I'm able to do that. And most of all, I think I'm just happy to be writing and making music that many people can, can relate to, can connect to um, from, um, from many different ethnicities to different countries, to different upbringings, uh, to different genres. So, um, you know, I think it's, you know, whatever, whatever you love doing, whatever you love writing. And I think that's, that's really important to continue doing that, but find yourself a great team that's going to help you get that music out there and, and, and support you and, and your art. Incredible. Well, <laughs> as I was mentioning, uh, there's this um, Nora Lohimo experience that uh, have this kind of country feel and but it's not just country on the album and I've noticed that Finnish artists in particular uh really like to play around with genres I'm not sure if you've heard of this um band that I don't know how much Canadians know about Eurovision but uh Finland's uh contributors to Eurovision this year were Blind Channel who've gotten quite popular for they've got a bit of a Linkin Park sound but they mix kind of like they call it violent pop, I guess, but like he heavy music and pop music, hip hop, okay. all of it in there. So I, I'm curious to know if you have any idea if you've got much of a following over in Finland where we seem to appreciate people who mess around with genres a lot, especially considering that uh, country's not so popular here. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I, I believe the following for Corey Marks over in Finland is, is pretty good considering. <laughs> Uh, but I know there's, I know there's hard rockers and metal folks out there. So again, it's just kind of, uh, you know, uh, th they can relate, even though it's a country record, uh, I find there's still a lot of people relating to, to, to my music and, and, and are loving it. So it kind of all works out. Very cool. Well, I'm really hoping that you get a strong enough following here that we'll be able to see you live at some point. <laughs> I would really love that. I'd love to do a whole European tour and, and uh, yeah, Finland is definitely one of those spots I'd like to, uh, to sell out and rock. <laughs> definitely. Uh, it seems like your European uh, following has for sure been growing since the release of the album. So do you have any plans or hopes uh, for any European tours once maybe Corona is under control or nothing? Set yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we had Outlaws was uh, went number three in Germany at Hard Rock Radio there. So that was, you know, that was I was pretty, pretty thrilled about that. And uh, yeah, I mean, overall, that the streams seem great over over in that that area. And, and um, I've always dreamt of going to Europe and places like, you know, I have a German background. and My brother played played hockey in, in England and Scotland and 
um, I never got the opportunity to go visit him and, and, and uh, you know, see those, those cultures and, and territories. And so, uh, yeah, most definitely, I, I would love to do a full European tour one day. And that, that would be that whole, that whole side of the world. That's, that's, that's the absolute plan. Mm. It's a good opportunity to see a lot of things for sure. Mm -hmm. Now you kind of mentioned streams there and uh, I've noticed that a lot of music this day really almost feels like business you know like many artists have to become businessmen and so much focus and especially in the north american market is pushing followers mm -hmm. and streams and like and share and all that stuff do you find that kind of frustrating at all that you have to upkeep the a sort of like business mentality about music that it's hard to just be an artist or does it i mean i mean yeah <laughs> yeah yes and no but I, again i have a, such a great team uh from management to, to label to agency so it, it's it's uh that definitely helps um on that note yeah i do find it does take a little bit away sometimes if you don't have uh you know folks to, that, that could take care of certain things for you but um you know i think it, in, in my in my respect and my, my thought is it's it's only helping me learn and and be better um, you know, cause you know, I'm, I'm big into aviation too. And, and one of my goals is one day, uh, tie in air shows and concerts like we had here in North Bay growing up. Um, and it was just such a thrill to have, you know, air shows Saturday and Sunday, you know, from noon to four and then from six to 11 at night were, you know, major international acts on these big stages and crowds of, you know, there's, you know, in, in a town of, of 50,000 people, um, you know, you got, you have over, you know, 80 to hundred thousand people coming on the festival grounds over that, you know, those three days. So um, that's definitely one thing. And you need to have a little business sense too. Uh, you know, there's, there's lots of money to be made. There's lots of people to be paid. Uh, so, you know, you got to keep, you, you got to keep your wits about it and, and kind of uh, stay focused on, on that uh, when you can and try to try to try to do that as, as much as possible. But um, you know, so yeah, I think there's definitely uh, it's, it, it can definitely be annoying. <laughs> but it, it also and, and and it could add a lot of stress if you let it. But it's also, a, you know, a bit of a learning curve, too. And I think, uh, you know, in some cases you can learn a lot more in real life circumstances and situations than, uh, than you do when you're, you're paying for them at school. Incredible. Well, speaking of aviation, very Bruce Dickinson of you, by the way. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um it would be really cool just throwing this out there. If you like the idea, you can pitch it to people. If you ever get to Finland, there is actually a small airport here that has been used for a concert venue a few times. It could be theoretically possible to mix something in there, maybe show up to your show in an ultralight or something like that. But yeah. it's it's a cool little place and they're trying to, you know, tear it down, pave it over, put some malls there or something like that. So there's a big oh, pushback wow. against that because it's some wetlands that aren't good for building on the usual right. money making nonsense. Yeah. And yeah. Well, hey, that yeah, that would definitely be cool. Uh, that that that's a huge goal of mine too. Is is even even do uh, concerts at at, at uh, airports, um, you know, because there's such such big tarmacs and cer certain uh, runways and airports uh, that I think it would be a cool a cool um, a cool experience uh, to be able to play play up up there. And and uh, that that again, that's a goal of mine. There's a big airport here, and I already have it all mapped out in my head how that would work. It's just. It tends to be a lot of red tape here in North Bay when, when it comes to making uh, great events uh, that, that can bring people into the city. But hopefully uh, they'll work with me on that one when that time comes. Incredible. So are you just uh, flying for your own amusement or are you doing any sort of commercial flying or what kind of flying are you doing? Um, a lot of my instructors uh, think think I should do do commercial um, and, and it's, it's crossed my mind. And I, I think, you know, I. I could do it. I just, um, you know, basically commercial in a sense is, is basically a, a piece of paper that allows you to get paid to fly. <laughs> um, um, but you could like, I can get multi-engine, I can get IFR, I can get night ratings. I could do all that stuff, uh, with, with the license that I have. Um, so that being said, I'll probably add on to my private pilot license. Maybe one day I just write the commercial test just to say I got it. Um, but, um, I think for now it's just more, um, yeah, for my, for my amusement, uh, for my thrill of, of aviation and flying, my passion for it, 
um, you know, I can just get up actually the, today. I'm going to go up my plane and, and go for a flight and go anywhere I want kind of thing. So that's, it's just, uh, you know, like, like, like a lot of bike riders, it's a freedom, um, freedom that they have. They just prefer to be on two wheels. I prefer to be, you know, a thousand feet up or, or more <laughs> and, and get, get places a little bit quicker. Um, but, um, yeah, I think I'll definitely add on and, and continue training and, and, and be a better pilot and, um, you know, work, work on, work on that is there's always room for, you're, you're always learning in aviation. Um, you, you can never really get too comfortable. Uh, because uh, w when you do that, that's when, um, you know, small mistakes turn into big ones. So um, I don't plan on, on, on that happening, uh, but you never know. So I'd like to be ready for it. And um, yeah, just, just, just having fun uh, doing lots of flying right now before, before I, um, you know, move on and some, move on to something else, whether that's getting that night rating or float rating or, or uh, doing something I always want to do and that's uh, get into aerobatics and formation flying. Oh, cool. It's a shame there's no uh, mandatory military in Canada because I know uh, lots of people got to play around with that just in military service if they went into the uh, <clears throat> aviation part of it in, in Europe. Yeah, well, actually, uh, yeah, like I, I was actually enrolled at RMC uh, uh, before this music career started as a pilot. That was going to be my, my plan, play five years of university hockey, you know, get a degree fly airplanes and and all, all doing that and getting paid paid to do it so and doing something I love uh, but um, ended up picking up the guitar and the rest is history. <laughs> that's kind of leads right into my next question I was kind of thinking you know at points in my life I have felt like I missed a calling as a country music singer one of the few <laughs> styles of music that my very deep voice can actually handle mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. um like as, as a Canadian kid listening to country music did you ever imagine that you would be a country music star when you grew up or was it more flight and sports for you back then uh it was a bit of everything and um you know there's there's a, a an opportunity for hockey um but and obviously uh, the my passion for flying was always there it still is and probably even even more passionate now uh, that I've learned a lot more uh while getting my license in flying but uh, to be honest, I always thought I was going to be more of a Tommy Lee. I, I was, uh, I was, I was drumming from the age of ten, and um, that was kind of like my my fallback for everything. It was like, well, if this doesn't work out. I'm just going to be a, a rock drummer, and, you know. Until you kind of figure out how that that really works, and uh, it, it's it's kind of it's it's pretty tough being a being a steady steady musician, and, and even just being in a steady band and making a good living doing that. Uh, well, you've already teased that you've finished your your next album already. Then, is there anything else you want to share about it, or tease about it, or have you given us all your secrets already? I think I've given quite a few secrets already. I just know that there there will be new music coming out very soon uh, this fall. Uh, we don't have a set date yet, but um, uh, we're hope, hoping that it, it we're going to release something uh, while I'm out on the road, and I can I can promote it and and uh, really push the music and. Um, you know, I know the new album will be coming out in 2022 and hopefully on the, the, the earlier side or mid 2022, but new music coming out very soon this fall. So I'm, I'm excited. Awesome. Did you find the uh, extra free time from not touring? Was that kind of an oppressive feeling or did you get inspiration in that time or a bit of both or how did it work for you? Uh, a bit of both. I mean, I miss I miss the energy and, and the you know, I'm not used to being home all the time uh, anymore. So it's, uh, you know, a, di a different, um, you know, it takes some getting used to, you know, so I'm kind of, you know, I, you know, the gym and the gyms are closed too. So it's not like you can just go burn off that energy. So uh, it was, it was definitely tough, but it, it definitely gave me room, room to write and work. And, and again, finish, finish things like a, a pilot license. And um so it's you know and now but now i'm just just ready to, to move forward and start playing shows again to get back to getting back to normal here incredible well that's all my questions for you do you have any last words for our readers slash viewers well uh thank you for listening if you haven't heard the record yet listen to who i am it's available everywhere on all streaming platforms and uh don't forget to follow me on twitter instagram and facebook at Corey marks music um, and I look forward to uh, being a Finland at some point in my career, hopefully sooner than later. 
and uh, you know, rock Europe and, and have fun.